Hey, how are you doing? So it, today is the 9th of February, 2021, uh, and this is episode 56 of the Notcast. And the reason I'm doing an episode today, the day after I just did another one, was very, very simple, is I thought I was going to have a nice evening watching television, watching what I call brain fluff, which is mildly entertaining stuff, normally involving either cooking or celebrities or... Uh, Obviously, there's going to be a murder in there somewhere, because uh, without murder, there wouldn't be any television. Uh, but unfortunately, even though today is the coldest day in uh, 11 years, and we're in the middle of a snowstorm, uh, and we're in the middle of a global pandemic, uh, the BBC have decided that they're going to be showing football, because somewhere on this bizarre, snow-driven, cold country, there is a football match that's happening. So I'm like, wow, I can't watch any old rubbish about murders. I'd better do something else. Um, and bearing in mind what people said um, when I put a poll up is people were interested in hearing me talk about band T-shirts. So I'm going to give you a tour through some of my favourite band T-shirts. Um, now, despite what it looks like, I'm not wearing all of the band T-shirts, which I'm going to be talking about today in one go. I've actually got three sets, three changes of uh, clothes, and each one carries about seven t-shirts, so we've got about 21 t-shirts to get through, um, and my my band t-shirt collection, uh, people go, oh, well, why do you buy band t-shirts, well there's, there's three reasons why I buy band t-shirts, the first one is, I want people to know that I like really old bands, uh, the second one is, I often buy band t-shirts at a show, and I often get very, well, in the days when there used to be shows and gigs, uh, get very crowded standing next to other humans uh, and very hot and very warm and very sweaty and singing all the words and sometimes singing the wrong words and all that stuff that goes with it and you come out and you go I'm really I just want to wear something that's cool um, you don't want to do a Don Logan and you know your first words to be going I need to change out of this shirt it's sticking to me like a C um, or you know obviously I've got the top part of Don Logan's head from Sexy Beast uh, in fact, I've almost got the bottom part, but I'm not a psychopathic murderer. Um, although me doth think he protest death too much, because as soon as you've said that, then the idea sits in your head. Um, okay, so that's embarrassing. Keep keep digging a hole. Uh, and the third one is actually that um, bands often make their profits on T-shirts. Touring margins are really low, especially post-Brexit. Um, so buy a band T-shirt, it keeps the band going. And that's why I buy so many of them. I'm going to start off, actually, with my two pet hates about band T-shirts. And I'm going to explain why you're not going to see uh, so, some artists in here. So this is Iron Maiden. Uh, pretty much all of Iron Maiden's T-shirts follow what Ian McShane calls tits and dragons. Now, I don't want to be judgmental about it, but I don't like buying band T-shirts that have got pictures of monsters on. Because I'm not 14, I'm not impressed by horror movies, I'm not impressed by monsters. Um, I bought this when it was uh, heavily discounted, is probably the best way of describing it. Uh, and that's why I don't tend to have many Iron Maiden T-shirts, uh, I don't have any Megadeth T-shirts, I've only got one Slayer T-shirt, because that was the last time I was going to see them. Um, and I've not got that many Metallica shirts. All the Metallica shirts I've got generally don't have a scary monster on, with the exception of, of one, which I'm not going to show you today. Although I am going to show you a T-shirt by Metallica, for one. Um, the other type of T-shirt I don't like is this one. I call this one the Bored Millionaire. And uh, at which point you've got the members of the band standing nondescriptly in front of a background, um, just going, mm, I'm going to stare at you. Now I know that's a the same bands, and I'm going to try and not repeat the bands all the way through, by the way. Uh, but this is a, you know, a classic example of the bored millionaire. And I'm ne I've never been particularly interested in, in uh, record covers or T-shirts that have pictures of band members on. Um, they're generally not particularly good. Uh, and I've kind of moved away from buying those over time. Um, so this one here is the first band T-shirt that I owned. Or more correctly, the first band T-shirt I owned that I've still got. I bought this at the Birmingham NEC in uh, 1990, 22nd of November 1990, so this is now over 30 years old, uh, on the last venue that Depeche Mode played on their Violator tour, um, and this I think was £10, um, and uh, I love it, it's been through an awful lot with me over the years, um, this particular design, and um, I just, it it's, was... From the first, it's the first band T-shirt I've still got, by the way. Um, I had a number of New Order ones, um, which literally were printed cheaply, but officially, because 
you would have did things on the tube and have fallen apart. Um, but this one is very special to me because it is from the first, it's the first and oldest man t-shirt that I've got. So Depeche Mode on the World Violation Tour. Now, this is not something I've done in a while. Uh, and if you hear uh, the sound of tearing fabric, I'll be heartbroken because I don't want to lose any of these t-shirts. They've been through many, many journeys with me over the years. Um, this is a classic Ned's Atomic Dustbin t-shirt that you will see from uh, such fantastic bands as Ned's Atomic Dustbin uh, and uh, Dog Doofa, which is Ned's Atomic Dustbin under a different name. This one I bought at the Wolverhampton Civic Hall in December 1991. This one is now also 30 years old. Uh, it's showing its age. On the back, there is a description of every show on that particular tour. Um, and I remember buying this because I was very, very, very warm indeed. Um, and I'm surprised this one has still survived. But like anybody that came up or grew up in Birmingham in the early 90s, the late 80s, there were two, three bands that you had to really, really like. I think it was in the water, actually. One, obviously, being Ned's Atomic Dustbin, the band that sold probably more T-shirts than records. Um, but they were very good at T-shirts. The other One of the other ones was the Wonder Stuff, who are one of my favourite bands and the band that I have seen the most over the years at a staggering 168 times. This T-shirt, uh, again, was in the summer of 1991. This one is a T-shirt for the Brighton show, um, but I, I went to the Walsall one instead. And <clears throat> I sold my Walsall one to make money when I needed to fund a divorce. So in 2003, I sold about hmm, 20 or 30 really old band t-shirts. I made over a thousand pounds and I used it to pay for a divorce and to be able to go to Vegas. So I have nothing but memories. Uh, this is the fourth one, which is The Cure. Again, it's bored millionaires, I'm afraid to say, but it is uh, the T-shirt that was sold at the last show by Boris Williams. Um, and that was at Finsbury Park on the 18th of June, 1993. Uh, this one is my oldest Cure T-shirt. I did have one for when I saw them at Nottingham Rock City in 1992. But I sold that one um, for an enormous amount of money. Um, certainly, uh, probably not as much as it sells for now. But there you are. But I, I love this T-shirt, but the problem is they're never going to make another one. So I have to be really sparing about when I wear them and when I wash them. And that's another thing that you need to bear in mind. And being a typical indie kid in the 90s, you know, band T-shirts were one of the ways in which you showed your uh, allegiances. This is the first Therapy T-shirt that you will see. Therapy are a much, much, much underrated Irish post-punk band. Um, that sound like a cross between Take That and Husker Do. I love them. They are brilliant, and anybody that doesn't love them uh, just needs to listen to more and better music. Uh, one of the other things that therapy do is they're incredibly good at doing uh, band T-shirts that look very, very close to existing brands. Um, this one is the Heavy Fucking Metal T-shirt, which seems to be very clearly based upon a certain type of amplifier. Um, but... Uh, it's a classic. It's also very old, this one, so I better handle it with care, as the Traveling Warmbridge says. And here is the third of the bands from Birmingham that if you love them, you had to. Or more correctly, if you grew up in Birmingham and liked indie, you had to listen to them. This is Pop Loot itself. This is an original 1994, uh, what I call a Cowboy Craig design, uh, which is also known as a skateboard design. It's very, very, very recently been uh, reprinted and designed or redesigned by um, Mammoth Creative Works who do a great job of bringing long extinct indie t-shirts back to life. Um, this is the one from 1994 and the uh, the reprints have only just been dispatched from Shop Will Eat Itself. So if you like this one you can now buy the uh, the modern equivalent which is identical in almost every way for £22 plus shipping uh, from the band themselves. And that means I'm no longer quite so fearful of wearing it. Next band t-shirt I'm going to come to is this one. This is the Beastie Boys. Now this, I got told off for wearing this t-shirt. I went to see David Gilmour from Pink Floyd at the Royal Albert Hall in 2016. And uh, some chap in a suit and a shirt, whatever, was like, 
walked past me and said, you can't like David Gilmour and the Beastie Boys. You shouldn't be here. And I was like, dude, I love the Beastie Boys. I love Pink Floyd. I love David Gilmour. You don't get a choice. And by the way, this is where I pause for a minute and put on some more T-shirts. Because there's only so many T-shirts you can put on. Otherwise, I'd end up looking like the State Puff Marshmallow Man. And despite what you may think, I don't actually look like him at the moment. I'll be back in a moment. Now, all those T-shirts have been from the 90s. And we're now going to start to move into the uh, what I call the noughties. Or the 2000s or whatever. Now, the year 2000 was the year where I was hoping we would all have robot butlers, hover cars... Um, and AI that was able to cook dinner. This one is a bit of a throwback to the 90s. This is an REM t-shirt. Now, this one eschews the uh, the standard board millionaires phrase because it's got cartoon pictures of them and they're wearing stupid outfits on, like rabbit ears, weird sunglasses and a strange, bizarre plague nose thingy. So this one is a reprint. Um, I couldn't afford to buy it at the time because at the time of the band's first post Bill Berry tour in 1999 uh, I had to make a decision between gig tickets or t-shirts and I've made the decision which I do not regret to buy more gig tickets and less t-shirts uh, but this one was reprinted relatively recently from the original designs and um, was sold on the tour and at the time of the tour I looked at it and went oh, I really want that but white t-shirts are have a uh, you know are a high risk item because if you're like me, you like to go to pubs, you like to eat food, um, and that's why black t-shirts are the best ones, because they go with everything, and black also stains less. So this is a, a, a t-shirt that I didn't buy at London Earl's Court in June 1999, or at the Manchester Evening News Arena, now known as the, uh, the Nine X, I think, or it was known as the Nine X at the time, um, and the... Uh, the the 1999 shows were fantastic, by the way. I did have tickets to see R.E.M. with Bill Berry at Wembley Arena on the Monster Tour. Uh, but Bill had to have the, the inconvenience of almost dying from a brain aneurysm and so uh, left the group shortly afterwards. So this is the, the front. It's R.E.M. at their thunderous best, uh, allegedly. I mean, it was pretty good. Maybe not thunderously best, but pretty good. And this is the, the back. And I really like the... The design with this. I mean, the thing with a band t-shirt is you're wearing a piece of graphic art, and it should work as a piece of graphic art that, if you didn't know the band, if you didn't know the logo, would look pretty damn cool on your sh on your chest. Um, if it only works because you know the band, or it only works because you recognise Bono or whoever, uh, it's probably not that good a t-shirt. You shouldn't be owning it. Um, so when it comes to band t-shirts, try and pick ones that are going to be classics, that, that live on and beyond the band, because not everybody knows the same bands that I do. I wish everybody did, and I wish every band that I liked was absolutely enormously huge. I mean, at the same time, I don't, because then I'd never get a chance to see them. Um, but, uh, you know, I wish that, that, you know, if in some way me wearing a band T-shirt makes it so that someone can go, oh, they look good, they look interesting, I'll check them out. Yeah, that's what it's... That's, that's great. And that's what I want to do, and that's why I kind of talk about the records that I talk about and the shows that I go to and things like that. This is a Pink Floyd t-shirt, which I studiously ignored for the past minute or so. Um, Pink Floyd do some good t-shirts, and they do some terrible t-shirts. There's no middle ground around that. Some of them you kind of look at and go, it's clearly designed for stoners. Um, <coughs> Or clearly designed by someone that doesn't think about what it's going to look like. Especially with the design of them. And <coughs> some of us Pink Floyd fans, we're not getting any younger. And some of us certainly aren't getting any thinner. And, you know, the idea of having a picture of the band and then having, you know, one's nose over here and the other one's ear over there. And it, it all looking like you're, you're looking at it through some weird wonky mirror or something. Is probably Or, um, you know, joke novelty glasses is probably not the way it is. So, for example, I'm just going to give you an idea of, of what my prescription looks like, by the way. So if you look at this T-shirt through there, what you'll see is, oh, my God, mate, everything's all looking a bit weird and wonky. And, you know, that is not necessarily how some T-shirts need to look. Um, I bought this one from, of all places, a Hot Topic in America in 2004. Um, 
and I'd never seen a decent Pink Floyd t-shirt before then uh, but frankly I, I just love the design and I'll probably never see one of these again I've only ever seen one other one and that was being worn by the guy on the plane on the way back who clearly had bought a Pink Floyd t-shirt uh, but this was yeah this game entered in a hot topic in 2004 in America um, this one Flaming Lips it's Pink Rock ladies and gentlemen I love this t-shirt because Flaming Lips generally make really great, slightly weird t-shirts. And in order for you to get the full benefit of this, I have to do that and hope this doesn't fall over. So what you've got there is you know, the design from the Yoshimi Battles, the Pink Robots era, um, with, well, I don't even know what those things are there, but mocking the phrase punk rock, it's clearly pink rock, it's brown, which is a colour that is not represented enough in the world of brown t-shirts and it's funny and silly, and I like it. This one comes from 2002. Uh, it's not probably the best uh, Flaming Lips t-shirt, but the band have a lot of extremely very good t-shirts indeed. And so I'm gonna take it off now, hopefully without ripping it. Man, this feels like I'm doing a, an episode of Crystal Maze or the Adventure Game or something. Uh, gronda Gronda there, that helps. I've got an angry plant in the corner that tells me what I'm going to be doing next issuing instructions um, and that's the back there uh, one two mic check mic check testing testing so I mentioned earlier about Metallica t-shirts uh, this one is uh, my favorite Metallica t-shirt I have definitely got my wares worth out of it and uh, in order for you to see the the benefit of the back there it says one I've only ever seen one other copy of this t-shirt uh, and that was in a crowd shot of the Metallica film Through the Never. Um, I've never seen another one worn by a human being um, and it's, it's probably quite rare and quite difficult. I bought this on the St. Anger Tour in 2003 um, and as I previously mentioned all the other choices which I had were uh, boobs, dragons, monsters, uh, cartoon caricatures of the band that looked like they'd been done by some guy that did cartoons in the street for 50 cents that type of thing, um, they just look shit. And I like Metallica, I'm not gonna make any pretense about that, I do, but their merch is often shockingly bad. Uh, and it, it looks like it was yeah, approved by a 13 year old. <laughs> cool, they look like a dragon in that one. I'm gonna sign that one off. Oh look, oh, you've got a big nose in that one, Kirk. We'll sign that one off as well and then we'll charge 25 or 30 quid to it. And it, it's just, it's a bit crap, it's a bit lazy. And it makes the owner look like a uh, like they're immature. And yes, I listen to a lot of immature music, but I don't want anyone to know. Or more correctly, I do. I don't care, but I don't want to wear a Metallica T-shirt that's got a bloody monster on it or an Iron Maiden one. I'm not interested in that. And so we're going to take this T-shirt off now. This one is a large, but obviously I have uh, expanded my waistline to fit in with my knowledge over the years. And uh, this one perhaps fits a little tighter than it used to. Here is a band that I have not mentioned enough so far. Uh, it's The Wedding Present. The Wedding Present do very, very good t-shirts uh, because they are classic. The t-shirts that they, they, they do could stand up as bits of graphic design or art. And uh, I just really like the idea of a, you know, the amplifier with the name of the record company on. I think it says uh, Scorpitones, Scopitones. On there and it's just a classic neutral relatively low stated green t-shirt with a picture of an amplifier on and sometimes that tells you everything that you need to know about a band no pictures of bored people standing around in a field no pictures of dragons no weird and unusual things just a graphic of a loudspeaker and this is normally the loudspeaker that makes those lovely crunchy guitar sounds that make me just run towards them like a lemming off a cliff and I just go, ooh, heartbreak, misery and the sound of what feels like a geography teacher moaning about his ex-girlfriend while he's trapped in the stairs and he falls down um, tra fall, trapped in a wardrobe falling down the stairs as someone described it I've listened to a lot of Wedding Present recently and even though uh, the Wedding Present have something like 244 songs that still isn't enough um, it's still probably about 124 more songs than Metallica have got, but Metallica songs are on average approximately four and a half times longer than any other band's average length of song, and I should probably stop talking about them. So I'm going to have to press pause again and go into my last uh, decade, which starts in 2010. This one comes from about 2006, 2007. I think I could be wrong, 
um, I don't particularly care. So the next time you see me, I will be wearing something different. Here we go, and pull. So we're into the last section here, and we're into the year 2010 and beyond. Uh, this is a, an event t-shirt uh, for the first time that I saw Iggy and the Stooges with James Williamson on guitar at the London Hammersmith Odeon. I know it says it's the Hammersmith Apollo, it's never the Apollo, it's the Odeon. In the same way that the Birmingham Academy was never the Academy, it was always the Hummingbirds. And uh, the Astoria is just a sad, sad loss. It really is. And of course the Forum in Kentish Town is the Town and Country Club. And I don't care what anybody else calls it, it's the fucking Town and Country Club. Sorry that I swore, but I... Hopefully uh, this is labelled not for kids, and frankly, swearing's the worst you're going to get out of me. Um, so when I saw Iggy and the Stooges, um, they were incredible, by the way. They're one of the best live bands in the world, and one that I'll probably never get to see again now that the drummer's dead and the saxophonist is dead, and the original uh, guitarist uh, is dead, and the original bass player is dead. Which means that if the Stooges played now, you would have a replacement drummer, you would have the second guitarist have the replacement bass player and you'd have a dead saxophonist um, so I think it's probably for the best that the Stooges have come to an end um, but I saw Iggy and the Stooges performing raw power in full at the Hammersmith Odeon and they're so good and the live shows don't give you an give you a fraction of the experience about what the excitement is like when you're actually in that crowd uh, great great gig i wish i'd seen them more but like every band you know you can see them a thousand times and it's still not enough you know even though the band that i've seen the most i still think oh, i fancy seeing them again they're so good so they don't get bored seeing the same band over and over and over again and the answer to that is no don't you get bored watching you know tottenham or manchester united or whoever no you don't because it's the same but it's different every time and so there we have Iggy and the Stooges live at the Hammersmith Odeon, even though they've got the, the name of the venue wrong on the back. Disgraceful. I didn't buy this one at the gig. By the way, I bought it in a remainder shop, um, like an excess fashion shop in Birmingham in about 2013, uh, primarily because it had sold out on the night, um, and clearly they were just selling off leftover stock. This t-shirt is one of my favourites. Uh, this is the Twilight Sad and Nil. Um, at some point I will do a video where I talk endlessly about how much I love the Twilight Sad and how good they are. Uh, but also they do good t-shirts, really great t-shirts. And this one I've chosen specifically because it looks like a pill t-shirt but it isn't pill. And uh, after Trump um, has received some support from John Lydon. You know, you have to think, well, I'm glad I didn't pin my colours necessarily too much to any one particular mast in that respect. Um, but uh, that's a completely different subject. So that's that's nil by the Twilight Sound from 2012, although I bought this at a show in Leeds in 2018 um, because I always wanted it and I never thought I'd find a copy. And then when I did find a copy for sale, uh, the band's manager put up a picture of the t-shirts that were being sold at the show and from my phone on the train I messaged him and said I really 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 want that t-shirt and he really 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 put it to one side and let me have it which is just wonderful and the kind of service that you can't knock so this is the the, the third of the Depeche Mode t-shirts Depeche Mode generally do t-shirts of them standing around looking bored and occasionally they come out with some ones that are absolutely fantastic. This one was sold in 2014 uh, on the last few shows of the Delta Machine tour. Not a great tour, not a great album. Uh, but this is a, a lovely t-shirt that from a distance you couldn't tell was a Depeche Mode t-shirt. You know, it's designed to help raise money for um, water to deprived areas. It's a the DM logo from the time in the shape of a watering can with just two of them highlighted in yellow. I, I loved it. As soon as I saw it, I thought, well, that just works as a piece of graphic design. It doesn't, it, it's very subtle as far as band t-shirts go. Um, this is a band, uh, this is 
and I'm so I can pretend I only like their t-shirts. In fact, they sell t-shirts that say I only like them for their t-shirt. Uh, this is Idols, and this is uh, one of their infamous cat chart t-shirts. They also have a dog chart t-shirt and a flower one, I believe. Um, Idols do very, very good t-shirts. Uh, and this one is just a picture of lots and lots of cats with names underneath. So, for example, uh, this one is Kit Kat Chunky. This one's ACAB on Coppers of Bastards. Uh, this one's Chumba Wumba. Uh, my favourite, I'm not sure you can see them, right at the bottom, is Squidgy Black. There's Squidgy Black. I love Squidgy Black, primarily because Squidgy Black looks like the cats, which I keep talking about and never show you because they're camera shy. Uh, but Idol's t shirts, I just really like them. Um, they've got some fantastic designs out there. And uh, as one of their t-shirts says, I only like them for their t-shirts. It's not strictly true. Uh, coming into the final straight now. And here we have one by Orbital, which I have modelled previously. Uh, which is the Monsters Exist t-shirt. And on the back it says, have you seen a monster? Call 1-800-Orbital. Um, if you, you know, if you want to recognise a monster, they look just like you. And uh, when I was talking about horror films yesterday, The Thing, Invasion of the Body Snatchers, um, some of the other ones, and about how monsters could look like human beings but fool you. Listen to these. <coughs> well, I wasn't expecting that. That proves that it's real, folks. Um, but when... Uh, sometimes I, you know, they say that one, one, about one in a hundred per people um, have psychopathic tendencies, and this is a little bit more pronounced than, let's say, um, having a personality disorder or something like that. You know, so a psychopath looks just like a normal human being, um, and in many respects, on the outside they are, and on the inside they just have a completely different way of processing thoughts and ideas. Um, and, and that was one of the things that really, really drew drew me to this. Also, it kind of looks like the Mars Attacks logo. Monsters Exist is the uh, the name of the Orbital album. And if depending on where you put the S in here, it could also be Monster Sexist. So, yeah, and sexism is, is monstrous in many, many ways. So it ticked all my boxes. Possibly I was thinking too much, which wouldn't be the first or the last time I've thought too much about anything ever. Uh, but this is currently uh, heavily discounted on the band's website in the absence of being able to generate any touring revenue. Uh, so this cost me £5, which is great, because on the night of the show, they didn't have any in the size which I am, um, which is bigger than medium, is probably the polite way of putting it. Uh, but they did have some left over on their web shop, which they then put on sale, and you can now buy it. So if you want to look like me, you poor, poor bugger, but you can do it by going to Orbital the band, their website, their merch page, and they should have some of these t-shirts left for five of your human earth pounds. And this is the last one, which I'm going to show you today. And by the way, um, I've shown you nothing but official merchandise so far. There is going to be an episode where I talk through unofficial and bootleg band t-shirts that I really, really love. If you have, if you've seen a monster, cool. Made me laugh when I saw that. So this is another design by Therapy, and this is the last one which um, I'm going to regale you with today. This is uh, Therapy, who, as I've said, are very, very good at, at taking uh, known and established ideas and, and yeah, perverting them a little bit and subverting them, such as the Marshall Amplifier one that they had earlier. Uh, this is <coughs> a parody of the, the YouTube Denial of Service Copyright Violation Award, and it says this, this design has been removed because its content violated therapies, terms and conditions. Sorry about that. Alongside the famous Gemmel, which is the, the therapy monster. Uh, and therapy's monster, luckily, doesn't look like a dragon, or it doesn't look like Rivet Head, or Eddie the Ed, or anything by Pusshead from Metallica. It's just this weird graphic here. Uh, and I saw this and I thought, I'm going to have to buy that because I love it. I love how it looks. It made me laugh. And sometimes that's what you need. It makes people stop twice and read it, which is a bit weird because if you're in a supermarket and you're buying something and someone goes, and you go, oh yeah, you're reading my chest, aren't you? So you've got to be careful about what you buy. But also, um, 
made me laugh when I saw it. And sometimes that's all you need it to do is a band t-shirt, is for it to stand up in its own right as a piece of graphic design that is going to look reasonable on your chest. And considering that there are plenty of other options which you've got around, things that you can wear, football shirts, branded logos, Adidas and whatever, I don't see any harm in wearing a band t-shirt that tells people the music that I like bring somebody in or it makes somebody listen to the band and maybe somebody loves that band as a result then my work here is done and at that point i'm going to pretend that it's you know a natural point to end it um, i've given you a tour through 30 years of some of my favorite band t-shirts and uh, the next time i talk about band t-shirts i'm going to talk through bootleg designs because i have quite a few of those and so are my favorites and the stories that sit behind those um, but in the meantime i don't know what i'm going to talk about next or when I'm going to do it, what I do know is that it's highly unlikely there's going to be a television match on tomorrow. Um, even I mean, I thought it was highly unlikely there'd be one today. But highly unlikely there'll be one tomorrow, uh, and so it'll turn up when it turns up. Um, as per normal, don't be a dick in the comments. Um, hopefully you, you've found this not tedious. If you have, why the hell have you spent half an hour watching it? Yeah. There's there's literally gazillions of a, I don't even know how many videos there are on YouTube, uh, probably billions. But there's literally billions of other videos that you can watch. Um, so thank you for spending the time with me uh, and for enjoying my uh, both um, completely unscripted sneezing and my pathetic strip cheese. I will uh, see you all again at some other point. Um, hopefully one day those of you who have met me in real life. Um, we will actually be able to have a pint together. I'd really like that because it's getting really tough at the moment because it's been a very long time since, uh, it's been like a year since anything like a normal social life was really the case. Um, and I, I've always tended to be to hibernate for the first five or six weeks of the year, which obviously came to an end on, on uh, Thursday the 4th uh, when I passed my least favorite day of the year, which is the first Thursday of February. So last year, my social life really lasted six weeks. Um, most people, it would have lasted just about three, three and a bit months. Um, but uh, you know, hopefully we will return. People say, well, well you know, when this is over, uh, this isn't going to be over. COVID is not going to be over. There's just going to be pre and post. And we're going to come, come out the other side of this in whatever form it's going to be in a world that's going to look and feel and act completely differently to the one that we can went into in. So, you know, remember if you had birthday cakes, uh, and, you know, it was encouraged that you would blow on birthday cakes. These days now, people would be like, gosh, you can't do that. You'd be spreading germs around. Um, so you have to think about how the world is going to be very, very different in future. Uh, but the important thing, most important thing, is that we make it through this as best as we can uh, with our hopes uh, up as high as we can get them and um, with optimism for the future um, you know we have to live in the belief that there's going to be something the other side of this and we're going to make it through whatever it is um, you know no one's having a laugh no one's having a giggle no one's living their best life at the moment we're all sat at home not going out probably Many of us working from home uh, in the same four walls, seeing the same things and the same people and the same views in the same weather and it always gets dark about 4.30 all the time and it's really tough. I know that and, and this is um, how I pretend to keep some form of sanity um, and if this helps you, that's great. Uh, but also dancing around the house when no one's listening to music you really, really love and singing out of tune, that helps too. So do that as well. And in the meantime, um, until we meet again, uh, take care of yourselves and each other. As Jerry Springer says, and as Alan Fluff Freeman says, if you love someone, tell them before it's too late. All right. Now, um, obviously I'm a dad. I have to make dad jokes. I'm going to stop making dad jokes now. And um, I'm going to catch up with you some other time. I um, hope you're keeping well and see you all hopefully in the near future.